finish today. Um, if you're like me and you don't get out a lot, I don't like going to shops, I don't like going to retail pubs, I don't like going to shopping malls, precincts, shopping centres, nothing like that, then you wouldn't have heard the news. But yesterday I had a rare day off work and decided to go and visit the shop because I needed a few bits. And being a Monday, kids at school, everyone's at work, I thought it wouldn't be too busy, so we went and had a look. And to my amazement, I went into the range. And what I didn't realise was, in October, the range brought the rights to the Wilco brand. Now, I wasn't aware of this because I don't get out a lot at all. Um, there's a lot of you out there now that probably do know this already, and it's old news, but I know there's a lot of people out there that do like using Wilco's garden stuff, the seeds, fertilisers, and all kinds of bits and bobs, because above all, it's cheap and half decent quality, and the seeds, I've always had a good germination rate. So I was very surprised when I went into uh, the range and found all the seeds, fertilisers, and lots of other bits and bobs, um, still at Wilco prices, with Wilco branding. Um, so that was great news for me, so I picked up a few bits yesterday. If you're like me and you've not got out and you don't read the news a lot, you probably wouldn't have known that. And I know there's a lot of people on YouTube that do like the Wilco stuff, so hopefully this is good news for you. Um, I picked up a few bits, and one of the ones I was so surprised at is these um, Gladiator F1 um, parsnip seeds. Now, £1.50 is quite expensive for um, Wilco, but these are F1s. And with F1 seeds, as you know, you don't really get a lot of seeds in them. Um, there's 200 seeds in this packet. Um, as you know, with parsnip seeds, they are temperamental and they don't really keep well. But I've got 200 in here, and they're dated 2028. So I think if I over sow this year, and whatever I've got left, I can over sow again next year. And hopefully, if I sow 50 and get 10, I'm a happy man, so uh, it's still very cheap. I also picked up a box of fish blood and bone, less than three quid, kilo and a half I think, less than three quid, I think 279, 299. So for those of you that do miss Wilco's, it is still out there and um, I suggest you get yourself to the range because that's where it is. I think they've got the rights to use quite a few lines and one of them is the gardening line so you can still pick your stuff up quite cheap guys. And um, I've always found the seeds to be quite reliable, to be fair. So there's a little bit of a tip for you guys. If you didn't know, I suppose most of you did, and I'm just behind the times because I'm old and boring and don't get up. But there you go. There's a bit of advice for you guys. Wilco's is still alive. So guys, while I was in the range, I brought um, some seed potatoes as well. Um, they've got them in there for pretty good value. So I bought, uh, I bought two packs of Kestrel, um, these are second earlies, I do like the Kestrel potatoes because they've got a nice little pink spotty tinge to them, they're, they're quite nice, you get eight seed potatoes in there, um, and they look decent quality as well, um, and I bought some the good old Faithfuls, Charlotte's, again eight in there, and these are three packs for a fiver. So, uh, when you look at that, really, three packs of seed spuds for a fiver, 24 spuds. Um, you can't really go wrong, good value. I've never tried seed potatoes from the range before. Um, I think it's one of their own, their own branded things, D-Re, they're called. Um, but we'll give them a try. After all, their seed potatoes, what could go wrong, really? 24 spuds for a fiver. Absolute bargain, guys.
first bed nearly empty guys I'm a bit out of breath but I thought I'd show you this as you can see in the bottom you can see the slabs and there's a little pair of about an inch and a half to two inches of clay there which uh, come out from the back of the garden I just use it to fill the bottom of the beds a lot of this broke down but that just shows you there's a good two inches there a space that couldn't be grown in really so if you consider the crops I've got out of this pallet collar bed with all that clay as well and a two inch drop in the top it's pretty remarkable With one of them lifted, guys, uh, that one over there, you can see this bed now is raised, and this is now half a metre deep. This bed, uh, all that soil's gone in there, the clay and everything. Uh, as you can see, some of this clay it is actually breaking down, it's been under there a year, so this will be fine. It's pretty good soil, to be fair, but this clay will break down. So yeah, that's half a metre. I've just got to get the other one on over there. And hopefully we'll get some nice carrots and parsnips out of this one. So guys, I'm going to get these potatoes out of the bags. Um, not purposely for chitting, because they've started chitting. Um, but I will stage them in trays. Uh, the reason I'm taking them out is because I don't want them chitting too big in the bag, because what you'll find, if they chit in the bag, when you try and get them out of the bag, um, you can sometimes break the chips off so I'm taking them out of the bag solely for that purpose and I will put them in a cold garage because um, I don't want them to chip too quick to be honest because it's still a bit cold to, to put them out and I don't want to have to carry buckets around in and out because of the cold weather so I'm just going to pop these in some trays <coughs> so they don't um, get broken chips really so these are the Kestrel Quite small. <clears throat> I'm just literally going to put these in a cell tray. As you can see, they're uh, it's quite good chips on them already, so I don't want these to go too quick because it is too cold. I literally, just stand them in the tray. There's quite a lot of chips on these. decent quality. And I'll lift these up in the garage because I do get the odd furry visitor this time of year. So that's the Kestrels. And just so I'm not there, I'll just pop that in the side. Charlotte's are quite a bit smaller, so they're going to go in this little baby tray. But they're only supposed to be small to take them anyway, so it doesn't bother me. <coughs> yeah, these are 
needs a tightening. Really small days. But uh, we'll see how they go. Three packs for a five, you can't really go wrong. Now it's got a big old kit on it, that one. Look at that. It's, um, I've got a couple of decent ones on the top, so I'll actually take that one off. And let them go. So it all stays those guys. Somewhere cool. But the garage is pretty um, frost free, so that should be okay. Just show you this little frame uh, while I'm in here. Um, the other half may be this for Christmas. Cute little scrabble frame. And it's got a. Uh, it's all about gardening, really. It's got little pots and boots and forks and birds and all kinds of things in it. And she makes these for all kinds of events. Um, weddings, christenings, birthdays, just family orientated ones. Um, they're 12 inches in size, 12 inches square, 30 centimetres, so they're quite big. Um, she made this to put in the greenhouse, but I don't really want to put it in the greenhouse because it does get a little bit humid in here and I don't want to ruin it. But uh, if you're interested in one of these guys, you can find her um, page on Facebook, Sam's Personal Frames, and uh, drop her a message if you'd like one because um, she loves making them and they're really nice. Uh, nice little personal touch. So, uh, there's a little bit of advertising for the missus. So I'm going to get the rest of these carrots out. They've started to regrow. So they're probably forked and uh, got side shoots coming everywhere. But it's time to get them out because I want to revitalise this box for the coming season. So we'll see what we've got left. Hopefully a few decent ones. Because uh, I want to get this all redressed. There's a few weeds in here as well. Anyway, let's get them out. starting to rot now. These have been in since April, so nearly a year. I think this one's got four legs. Perhaps a few more than four. That's a decent one. Still got some big old carrots here. These uh, late sowing, so look at that one. I'll get that one out. Oh, that's a good one. Look at the size of that. Still really good condition, just of the one that's split. So I'm quite happy with these, considering they've been in nearly a year. Decent. I think 
there's two in here. Another massive one. Look at that. I think we've got a couple in here as well. That one's uh, been slug damaged by looks of it. Or something. That's had a go. Oh my god, it's absolutely huge. This is massive. size of that. That is a monster. It's absolutely huge. It's got to go at the top but that's a weapon. Look compared to the others. And they're big. A couple of stragglers. Last one, which is uh, another another whopper. Oh, blimey! Size so of that. Absolutely huge. That's your standard carrot that you get from uh, just a normal sowing. As you can see, I mean that's got to be eight inches, seven, eight inches. Look at that. Monstrous. Now this box is two foot wide. You can see the size of those. Fourteen and a half inches, and that one is thirteen inches, and the rest of them are not too embarrassing. You know, some really decent carrots. That one's for the bin, but the rest of them are all fine, and I'll um, I'll store these somewhere cool and dark. I just can't get over the size of that. That's absolutely huge. So uh, that's me done for today guys, uh, that was hard work on its own, so just the other one to do, uh, if I do get any more done uh, today or tomorrow morning, I'll attach it onto the end of this video, see you soon guys.